Today's lesson is I can evaluate equations or inequalities to find true and false answers. And so the first thing we need to do in order to understand how to solve these problems today is we need to know what our inequality symbols mean. This is something we tend to forget. And so it's something good to refresh each year. The first symbol is obviously our equal sign. And that shows equality or when things are the same. So we could say four equals four. The second one, we would be eating the first number. Remember if we think about those as alligator or crocodile mouths. So it's greater than. When we talk about greater than, we could say seven is greater than two. Below that would then be our opposite, which is less than. I always think of it, if I would push it open, it would make an L. If I want to use something that's less than, I could say zero is less than three. And then down below, they're very similar to greater than and less than, but they now have that line underneath, which is actually part of our equal. So we can say greater than or equal to. Not only is it greater, it could also be equal. So I could say eight is greater than or equal to seven. And I could also say eight is greater than or equal to eight because it is equal, it's still true. And then last, less than or equal to. So one is less than or equal to six. I could also say though, six is less than or equal to six. Knowing those inequality symbols, we can now figure out some examples. We have multiple examples and we have a three-step process we need to do. First, we want to translate each expression then we are going to each time plug in the number three for our variable and determine if it's true or false. So our first expression says the sum, sum is one of those operation words, of five and a number is equal to, my other operation, eight. I know sum means to add and I'm going to add five and a number. So I would say five plus a number. When we talk about a number in math, I don't know what the number is. And so I use my variable. You can use any variable you want. Generally, we use the variable x. So five and a number, five plus x is equal to, equal sign, eight. And then it says, plug in the number three. Five plus three, so I replaced my variable or that number with three. And I'm asking, is it equal to eight? Yep, it is, it's true. Our next problem says the product of five and a number is equal to eight. Product means multiplying. And I'm going to multiply five and a number that I don't know, so that variable. So five times a variable, I'm gonna use a this time, is equal, equal sign, eight. Step two says to plug in the number three for my variable. So instead of a, I'm gonna put a three. Five times three, is that equal to eight? No, five times three is 15. So this time it was false. We are still following those three steps with our next two examples. We have the sum, well we already said sum means adding, of five and a number is greater than eight. So this time we are gonna be using our, inequal our inequality symbol. So the sum of five and a number, five plus my number, which I'm not sure, I'm gonna use the variable y, 
is greater than, so use our greater than symbol, eight. When I plug in three for my variable, I will say five plus three is greater than eight. And if I solve, I know five plus three is eight, but the question I'm asking, is eight greater than eight? This time it's false. That's not true. Eight is not greater than eight. In order to have made this true, we could have said greater than or equal to, and that would have solved everything and made it true. But because we didn't have that equal to line, it's not true, it's still false. And last but not least, the product, we know product means to multiply, of five and a number is greater than eight. So if we think about five times my variable, this time I'm gonna use C, greater than eight. And instead of C, we're gonna plug in the number three. Five times three, is it greater than eight? Well, five times three I know is 15. Is 15 greater than eight? Yes, it is. So this time we have a true statement. And last but not least, we have to evaluate each problem. If it's asking us to evaluate something, we're going to plug in and solve. Plug a number in and solve. That's all evaluating means. We have to determine if it's true or false. If it is true, is it the only solution to make that true? Or is there another possible answer? Okay, so there's a couple parts to each of these problems. Starting with this first one, I'll show us. 4 plus x equals 12, and it's saying evaluate when x is 8. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put the number 8. 4 plus 8 equal to 12. Well, I know 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 equals 12. Yep, that works. It's true. Now, because it's true, is it the only solution that makes it true? Well, could I do 4 plus any other number to make 12? And when I think about it, no. The only possible answer is 8. The only thing we can add to 4 to make 12 is 8. So it's true, and it's the only answer because it's equal. If we look at this next one. Fractions mean division. So Q divided by 4 is less than or equal to 3, and Q is 8. So I'm going to put 8 in for Q. So 8 divided by 4, less than or equal to 3. 8 divided by 4, I know is 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. It's true again. However, could have I taken a different number and divided it by 4 and get an answer that's less than or equal to 3? Yes. This time around, because it's an inequality, that produces me a whole bunch of different answers. Instead of 2 here, I could have had... 1, 0, negative 1, 3, negative 3. I could have had a ton of different answers. So there's a lot of variety of answers that could have been plugged in for Q to make a true statement. Next, 7 is greater than P minus 1 fourth when P is 3 and a half. So I'm going to say, is 7 greater than 3 and a half minus 1 fourth? I know 3 and a half is really 3 and 2 fourths. Now I have a common denominator I can subtract. Is 7 greater than 3 and a fourth? Why, well, yes it is. So this is true. And once again, because it's an inequality, because it's just saying it's greater than, we have a variety of answers. I could have had, instead of three and a fourth, I could have had six, five, two, zero, one, negative one, negative four, and so on. I could not have had seven though, because seven is not less than seven. And last but not least, eight equals 32Z. 
that implies we're multiplying, and z is 1 fourth. So 8 equals 32 times 1 fourth. Well, 32 times 1 is 32. 1 times 4 is 4. 32 divided by 4 is 8. So 8 equals 8. Once again, it's true. But because it's equal, that's the only answer. <laughs> so when it's an inequality, we can have multiple answers. But when we have equations or equal signs, we only get one answer.